Welcome to Stay at Home Connect. I'm Phyllis Jackson. Georgia's Department of Public Health reporting its first case of the COVID UK variant. The patient is said to be an 18 year old man with no history of travel. He is currently in isolation at home. Although this mutation is more contagious, medical experts say they can't confirm that this strain is more severe or that it will lead to an increase in deaths. The UK variant has been discovered in New York, Colorado, and California. There is some indication that a new extremely contagious COVID-19 variant out of South Africa could be resistant to the new vaccines. Researchers are concerned that this mutation may actually disable the vaccine's effectiveness, but are investigating its impact. Georgia elects Reverend Raphael Warnock in the Senate runoff against Kelly Leffler. The senior pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, Warnock, makes history as the first black senator to be elected from the state of Georgia. He is also the 11th black senator ever elected to the U.S. Senate. John Ossoff defeats David Perdue to become the youngest senator in 40 years. Warnock and Ossoff's wins give Democrats control of the Senate, which is now evenly split between them and the Republicans. Any ties would be decided by vice president-elect Kamala Harris. The surge of COVID-19 in Georgia is impacting every aspect of the medical community. Northside Hospital officials tell me that their convalescent plasma supply is depleted. Since launching the convalescent plasma program, Atlanta Blood Services has collected more than 1,700 units of plasma from 563 donors. Now there's a waiting list. I caught up with Carrie Cox, executive director of Atlanta Blood Services. So many people are meeting the needs in whatever way they can. So for people who may be considering uh, donating plasma, this very awesome plasma, uh, tell us what the requirements are. And if they're a little on the fence, what do they need to know about the process? Okay, thank you for asking that. Really what we're looking for right now are is anybody who has recovered in the past 14 days to 90 days. That's when your antibody levels are the highest, and that's when we want to collect your plasma, when we want to collect that liquid portion of your blood that has the, has the antibodies that will help somebody else out. We want you to be at least 18 years of age, make sure you're in good health, make sure you have recovered from your COVID infection, we make sure you, that you're healthy, and um, meet all of the regular blood donor criteria. If you or someone you know has recovered from COVID-19 and would like to donate convalescent plasma or learn more about eligibility, go to atlantabloodservices.com or call 404-477-1298. Vaccination efforts continue in a slow pace. Georgia health officials say that while some healthcare workers in Metro Atlanta are getting vaccinations, vaccines are literally sitting in freezers in some rural parts of the state. Public Health Director Dr. Kathleen Toomey says lack of adequate staffing and logistics seem to be playing a role in the problem. Doctors in Los Angeles County say COVID cases have quadrupled since November. They are struggling to maintain the proper amount of air pressure for adequate oxygen levels and have even instructed paramedics not to transport patients with little chance of survival. Officials say someone is dying every 15 minutes in Los Angeles County. Atlanta City Council member Michael Bond joins with the Atlanta Police Department's Historical Society to honor APD officer Claude Monday, the first African-American APD officer killed in the line of duty back in 1961. The socially distanced ceremony was held at Lincoln Cemetery. Many of the people that he was charged with protecting probably wouldn't have sat next to him at a lunch counter. May have called him the, the N-word, but yet he had sworn an oath to protect those individuals and individuals from his own block, from his own community. And of course, he did not get the type of recognition at the type, time of his death. Uh, his family didn't get uh, to honor him in the way that we honor our fallen police officers today. And so we want to recognize, one, how far we've come in our society since those segregated times. And then two, make sure that we're honoring those who do sacrifice everything on behalf of the greater good. COVID-19 impacting music's big night. The Grammys have been postponed due to the virus. Officials say they will have the big event 
on the 14th of March. We'll see you on the next episode of Stay at Home Connect. 